Say this after me right now. Say, I am a spirit, I have a soul, and I live in a body. Amen? This, your body is your house. So you have a soul. You are not a soul. You are a spirit. Amen? This, this is a real you. you. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Amen? So each part has its own functions that God has given. Right? The, of course, your body is, are the five senses. You have the sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. So those are your bodily functions. All right? In other words, anything that activates this is activating your body. So soul, the function of the soul is this. Mind, emotion, will. So your emotions, whether you feel joy or you feel uh, uh, elation, you feel peaceful or you feel depressed, you don't feel good and all that, it's just an emotion, all right? It's all in your soul. It's not true in your spirit, all right? Now, emotions can affect your body. And that's the thing that we're going to look at as well. But then look at the will. The will is actually in your soul. You decide in your soul, Okay? So these are the functions of the soul. And what are the functions of the spirit? The spirit is communion, intuition, and conscience. Now, communion is communion with God. That's where you commune with God. You don't commune with God with your body. Okay, you don't like, oh, I feel God. And it's true, sometimes you feel God. That's fine and good, but don't rely on it. Amen. You commune with the Father in spirit. Those, the Father seek of such to worship Him. Those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit, and in truth, all right? So that's where you commune with God. And it's the most intimate uh, communion, amen? Even bodily, if you sense Him, what's going to happen when you don't sense Him? Bodily. The bodily sensations are no longer there. I know people cry sometimes in the, in the tangible presence of God. And I, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, I want people to have experiences like this and I've seen them and I'm not knocking that, okay? But I don't want us to depend on those things. God says we walk by faith in the spirit realm and not by sight, okay? And then you cannot also contact God with your emotions. God, I, I, I want to feel you, Lord, feelings of felicity. You know, I, I feel that you are near. No, no, don't depend on that because your feelings can go up and down, amen? But in your spirit, man, you, are, you have communion with God. Just realize it. And that's why the pray, praying in tongues is actually praying in the spirit. Whereas praying with the understanding is praying with your soul, with your mind, your understanding. So the deepest part of communion with God is actually your spirit. That's one of the functions. And then intuition. Now intuition, even, even though people are dead spiritually, uh, but certain functions, you know, the word dead is, doesn't mean cessation of all the, the, the spirit functions. Even the people who are not safe, they still have a, a certain amount of communion. There are times they, 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 they sense God. All right, in the communion. But it's in a state of, uh, it's daden. That's a better word to use. It's daden. Like the Bible says, a widow, you know, talking about a certain widow, all right, certain widow that lives in, in sinful pleasure. All right, she's dead while she lives. The prodigal son, when he was living in sin, the father says, right, my son was dead, but is now alive. So the same thing, we are cut off from God in the sense that, you know, but, but the functions are still there, you know, but they lie dormant. But when you're born again, they all come alive. Amen. Full. Amen. In full force. Praise the Lord. They are resurrected. Hallelujah. So there are people of the, of the world even, they can sense in their intuition long before their mind understands something. So that's why it's important for us to know the intuition. Amen. And the Bible tells us that for those who are born again, those who are believers on Christ, there's a new covenant established with them in Christ and it's that God will lead you from within. Amen. God will put His Spirit in you and lead you from within. And how does God do that? Intuition. Amen. If you are about to sign on a business deal and, and you, you're contemplating about it and, and there, there is an unrest inside, deep down there's an unrest. You, you can't explain it. You, you don't know why. Listen, stop, pause and pray again. Amen. Before you rush into it. Amen. Don't rush. Listen to your spirit. Listen to what God is saying to you because your, your intuition is quicker, amen, than your mind and your body because it is in contact with the eternal spirit, God's spirit, and it knows things even before it happens. Praise God. So we must learn to live by our intuition. Amen. Uh, 
parent by your intuition. Amen. Deal with your children by your intuition. Listen to what God tells you. Amen. Um, we shall even eat. <laughs> Amen. Eat by your intuition. Your, your body, your intuition says enough. Your, your intuition says, okay, today you can eat more. Right? Don't go even go by, I, I always eat less. Okay, if your, your body is telling you that, by preparing you for some, some energy uh, depleting task, you know, ahead of you. But whatever it is, just follow the intuition on the inside. Until the more you practice that, just like with the muscles of the arm and all that, it becomes stronger and stronger, but spiritual strength. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And now we, we see uh, conscience. Conscience is the part where, actually the word conscience in the Greek is the same as consciousness. Like the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, for the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of those things can never with those same sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make the comers thereunto perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Why? Because the worshippers once purged, once cleansed, should have no more conscience of sins. In other words, if all those uh, sacrifices of the Old Testament, the burnt offering, the sin offering, they bring a lamb of uh, as a sin offering. They bring a goat for a sin offering and, and uh, those goats die in their place and they are forgiven for a, 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 a day or a week, you know. And, and that's how you done. They offer daily, even the Bible tells us, as well as also uh, yearly, all right, where they bring the bullock on the Day of Atonement. The Bible says all this is temporal. It's impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. And God says that if those sacrifices had worked, the worshippers would have no more conscience of sins. Do you see that? But the word conscience is the word consciousness in the Greek. And that's why the, the translations like ESV and a New King James Version puts it as those who are once purified, once cleansed, should have no, no longer should have any consciousness of sins. Now let's go back to Romans chapter 8. In verse 10, it says, And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Okay, the body is dead because of sin. Do we agree on that? Every time you experience depression, you're experiencing death in your, in your soul. That's a manifestation of death. Death manifests as depression. In your body, death can manifest as sickness, disease, constant fatigue. All right, these are signs of weakness and death. Okay, friend, do not be worried. In fact, for the child of God, even though the body is dead because of sin, we still have the old body. When Jesus comes again, we're going to have a brand new body, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's going to transform our body like to His body. But until then, we have this body. And the Bible says, even though Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. The Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, that righteousness is not something that you do. It is who you are. Amen? You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So your Spirit is life because of Righteousness. So the thing is this, if only I can get that life in my spirit to touch my mind and then to flow into my body. How is that possible? The very next verse tells you, but if the spirit of Him, so although your body is dead because of sin and your spirit is life because of righteousness, but if the spirit, there's the Holy Spirit here, if the spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Hallelujah. Do you, do you hear that? The Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead, He indwells you, right? He's going to quicken, give life to your mortal body. Amen? Now back to the, uh, my chart again on the spirit soul body. So what's happening right now? What do you have in your spirit? Righteousness. Can you see that? The Bible says your spirit is life because of righteousness. Now, 
what you want is that you want the life in that spirit because you are righteous. You want that life to touch your soul, to permeate your soul. You want it not just to be contained in your spirit, but to come out and touch your soul. And then after that, touch your body. That results in healing, health, wholeness. Amen. Renewal of youth and strength. Hallelujah. But notice it all starts with your spirit. Your spirit is born again. Your spirit is righteous. And God wants you to be conscious. Now, where are you conscious? You're conscious in your spirit, right? So exercise that, being conscious that you are the righteousness of God in Christ. And you do that by confessing. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. So the more you confess it, come to the place where you even feel it in your emotions. Amen. Because your emotion is your soul realm. Now you want that life. That life is already in you. That Zoe life, that life from God is in you. If that life can touch your depression, that's the end of your depression. If that life can touch your sickness in your body, amen, it will heal your body. Praise the Lord. So that life needs to come out from our spirit and into our bodies. But the problem is what? It says the spirit is life because of righteousness and we are not righteous conscious. So as long your soul realm, your mind, back to the verse uh, 6 again, to set the mind on the flesh is death. Notice that? But to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. So your your soul realm is the deciding factor. Are you going to focus on the fact that your spirit is now, you are a, now I'm, I'm, I'm illustrating like I'm the soul, okay? The soul decide to set, to set yourself, focus on the flesh or to focus on the spirit. Your spirit, my friend, is life because why? It's righteous. Amen. Because of righteousness. Now, the Bible says, get your mind to focus on that. Listen to teachings on it. Amen. Renew your mind to who you really are. And then if you set your mind on the Spirit, it's life and it's peace. Amen. To your soulish realm. It's gonna, you're going to feel it even in your, your mind, in your emotions. Hallelujah. It's going to affect your will. Praise the Lord. So that depression, where is it? Where is it found? It's in your soul, in your mind. Amen. Sickness is found in your body, but the life and peace can touch that depression and remove it and flood your emotions. Amen. Flood your soulish realm with life and peace. Hallelujah. So what, 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 where, where is the, where's the point that there's a break? It's because we are not conscious. We are righteous because that life is in that righteousness. So the more you're conscious of it, you're setting your mind on the spirit. Guess what? The life comes out and touches your mind. And then when your mind is touched, it goes further and touches your body. That's when you are healed. Hallelujah! Hey, hey. I preach myself happy. Amen. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.